All right, so now we're getting into chapter seven and we're going to introduce how to describe chemical reactions. And we're gonna use something called equations. And our equations aren't gonna look like the equations that you have in algebra, but they're gonna bear a lot of similarities. So let me get my marker ready to go. And we're gonna say, first of all, a couple things before we get into the details. A chemical change, right, occurs when a substance is converted uh, into one or more new substances that have different formulas and different properties. And we call those reactions. Reactions. That's the term we use for that a lot, right? So and this is what chemistry is largely about, is chemical reactions. Well, write a balanced chemical equation is our learning goal from the formulas and products of a reaction. Determine the number of atoms in the reactants and products, right? So we're basically going to be introducing a lot of new notation this chapter. So let's get into it. So a chemical change, a chemical change occurs when a substance is converted into one or more substances with different formulas and different properties. Okay? It can be observed by several things. First of all, the formation of bubbles, which is the formation of a gas, okay? A change in color, production of a solid, which I'm going to call precipitation, or the production of heat or the absorption, okay? It's either heat is absorbed or or, uh, all right, so there's, I think, four things here. Let me say them again. Uh, bubbles, which is a gas, changing color, a precipitate, and heat, absorption, or, produ or production. That's right, that's four different things. Okay, so let's just look at these, a couple, a couple of um, pictures that come from your textbook, Table 7.1. A change in color, right, if you have a nail and it rusts, so here's the unrusted nail, you can see it right there, and here's the rusted nail. You can definitely see a change in color, right? Changing color when you get rust. Now, if you take uh, car calcium carbonate and put it in water, or you know, you've seen, you've seen, say, Alka-Seltzer or some kind of medicine maybe that you can put in water, and you get formation of bubbles. Can you see the bubbles there? That is also evidence of a reaction. Evidences of chemical reactions is what we're talking about right now. So first of all, changing color. And then formation of a gas is the second one. The third one is if you get a solid that, sh that comes out, that's a yellow solid forms. So in this particular one, this is probably, that's potassium iodide being added to lead nitrate, okay? You're gonna get a yellow solid that comes out. And this, if we give this reaction enough time, this yellow is going to, is going to fall to the bottom and make a little pile of yellow powder at the bottom of this at the bottom of this liquid, okay? And so that is evidence of a chemical reaction because we are getting a precipitate, all right? Now, the final evidence that we're gonna consider is when we get heat. We get hot flames, and if we get heat, that is also evidence that is in the heat, by the way, is either produced or absorbed. So if you get cold, that's really the same thing as heat being absorbed from your hand or from the air, okay? And that is the final evidence of a chemical reaction. So let's look at a, a, a sort of a microscopic view of a chemical reaction. If you have something called, not called, <laughs> you know what this stuff is. If you have something like charcoal, here that's what the, this is, charcoal's burning. It has a structure, if we could look at the atoms, we might say that this, the atoms are arranged kind of like this. Can you see little hexagons right here? So there's this, uh, the, the, um, the carbon in this charcoal, might look like these little hexagons, right? It's hexagonally packed carbon atoms, right? And then you get oxygen coming in from the air. This is really meant to represent O2, right? This is meant to represent carbon, right? Which we're gonna say carbon solid. This is O2 gas, right? And when they come together, they actually, this is carbon solid. This is O2 gas. When they come together, if you give them heat, that, that's what the little triangle means. If you give them heat, then they're going to make carbon dioxide. And that's what, and then it's going to let off a lot more heat than you gave it, by the way. And that's what, that's what this red stuff is, right? It's just the, it's just the, um, the carbon that's heated up super high. And then you also get carbon dioxide gas, which comes off. Here's my carbon dioxide gas coming off, right? So this is a chemical, uh, so the question is, let's draw a chemical equation for this reaction. And it's, you can see it's already been done for you. We're going to do uh, several in this uh, in this section here but carbon solid is here O2 gas is here and carbon dioxide gas is what what forms from it can you see that I have one atom of carbon for every two atoms of oxygen 
one atom of carbon for every two atoms of oxygen, and I'm going to get carbon dioxide gas, okay? So this works out very nicely. We'll see some in a, in a few minutes that do not work out so nicely. All right, so just a little more introduction to the notation. The symbols that we're going to use are as follows. We're going to use arrows that say, and we're going to say produces or yields. When we use that arrow, we're going to say produces. So reactant plus reactant produces product plus product. Okay. Reactants now, the things that start out with reactants are on the left side of the arrow. We have a reactant plus a reactant. And the products are on the right side of the arrow. So reactant plus reactant produces product plus product, right? Multiple reactants are going to be um, in, are going to be indicated by a, a plus sign, of course. And a delta sign indicates indicates that we use heat to start the reaction. So here I've got delta, and that means that we are adding heat to this reaction. So these two reactants are probably not going to do a whole lot until we add heat to it. Okay. The physical states are the final thing I want to I want to point out that we denote these in parentheses. So if you have a solid, we're going to say S. If you have a liquid, we're going to say L. If you have a gas, we're going to say G. And if it's dissolved in water, we're going to say AQ for aqueous. If it's dissolved in water. All right. So we'll get lots of practice with those as we go along. Table 7.2 uh, tabulates uh, this this information which I've just given you. Table 7.2 from your book and. Uh, and let's let's move on now. What we want to do is we want to say if we have a we want to we want to introduce you to balancing chemical equations. If you've had any chemistry um, background at all, if you took a high school chemistry course, which I think is required in, in Georgia, then you uh, then you've seen this before. So balancing a chemical reaction basically means that we're not going to just disappear any atoms, or we're not going to create any atoms out of nothing, right? So the number of atoms on the reactant side has to equal the number of atoms on the product side for each element. And that's sort of the baseline for balancing reactions. Reactions. So let's finish this conversation out by doing a couple examples. P4, let's do this one here in P, P4, right? There are four P's. P4 plus 6 Br2. So it looks like there's 12 bromine atoms. And it looks like there are 12 bromine atoms, okay? So state the number of atoms of each element on the reactant side and the product side. So P, there are four. Oh, let's do this here. Let's do red. Phosphorus and bromine on the reactants and the products. So it looks like there's four over here, right? You see that? And there are four here, okay, and it looks like for bromine there are 12 in the reactants and looks like 4 times bromine is 12 there also, okay. So let's do the same thing for, or a similar idea for aluminum, aluminum, iron, and oxygen, reactants, and products. So aluminum, looks like there's two here, and it looks like there are two aluminums here. That's nice. Okay. So iron, there are two here. And it looks like there's two irons here. Okay. And oxygen, looks like there's three here. And three here. Okay, good. So let's do let's do um let's do an example now where you have to balance it. So first of all, we have to write the equation out. So Balance the chemical equation with the solid Fe3O4. I'm not requiring you to name it right now, but that's a solid, right? I'll do that in red. Reacts with hydrogen gas, okay? Hydrogen gas is, is that, right? To produce solid iron. right and water H2O and that's going to be a liquid because we called it water right okay so pause the video and come up with uh, the correct coefficients for this reaction so that you can balance it okay so I'm gonna 
suppose that you paused it. I'm going to go across here and make a table. Iron, first of all did iron, then oxygen, and then hydrogen. Okay. Reactants and products. Okay. So there's three irons here. So I'm going to have to put a three here so that there are three and three. Right? There are four oxygens here. So I'm going to have to put a four here to make that four and four. And it looks like I've got two here, but eight here, right? There's eight right there. So I'm going to have to make a four there to make that eight. That's going to be eight and eight. I think it's balanced now. Let's look at it, okay? Let's just check it with another color. So there are three irons and three irons. That's correct. Okay. There are four oxygens and it looks like four oxygens. Okay, so that's correct. And there are eight hydrogens and eight hydrogens. That is also correct. Okay, good. So there's your answer. Okay, and let's do one more example where we have some a little more complicated. Uh, pause the video, wrestle with this for a couple minutes, and then come back and see how I do it. Okay, so I'm going to suppose you paused it. And I'm going to write sodium, and I see that phosphate ends up being phosphate over here too. So instead of writing that as separates, I'm going to say phosphate, like that. And that's going to save me a lot of time. Phosphate and magnesium and chlorine, right? Reactants and products. Okay, so I'm going to go with, first of all, with sodium. And let's do this in red. I got three sodiums here, so I'm going to put a three here. Okay? And this is going to be a little extra work. I can see already there's three chlorines here and only two here. So I'm going to have to probably do something to that, right? Yeah, I definitely am. All right, but uh, I've got one phosphate here. So, so far, though, let's go three and three. Let's just do this stepwise, three and three. And I've got one phosphate here and two phosphates over here. So I'm going to have to put a I'm going to have to double that. So I've got two and two. And now that I've doubled that, I actually have six over here. So I'm going to double this and make this six. This is already working out nicely. See, it just worked itself out. So six and six. Okay, can you see that? I've got six sodiums here and six over here. And I've got two phosphates here and two phosphates here right okay and magnesium I'm gonna have I've got three over here so I'm gonna go ahead and put a three right here and I see I've got three there so it's gonna be three and three and it looks like I'm done because I got six chlorines here or chlorides right and six chlorides here so six and six I think I'm done but let's just go through and check it one more time six sodiums six boom Two phosphates, right, because of there, and two phosphates because of there. Check. Three magnesiums, three magnesiums, check. And six chlorides, and six chlorides, yep, check. Okay, good, so this is correct. So it turns out it's two, three, one, there's a one in front of that, right, and six. All right, hope that's helpful. You're going to get a lot more practice uh, in, in your homework. Good luck.